Welcome, City of Joy, to this awesome, amazing time, the fellowship to learn together and to study the marvelous things of God. I'm excited to all of the City of Joy Nation who is uh, participating and you're with us on today as we go into our Bible study, to our online community, and to the marvelous friends of our family members at the City of Joy. Welcome to our Bible study. We got a lot to cover. I have a lot to talk about with you today. I'm C.A. Thompson, Pastor T., your host pastor, uh, while we're going through this study. And I'm expecting some great things out of tonight's lesson in the name of the Lord. First, I want to mention two things. Uh, I want to make sure that you have our email address, cityofjoyglobalministries at gmail.com. You need that because we're in the state what well, we've been praying for our nation, our community. Many of our own members have been affected by COVID-19. They've been under quarantine. They've been in the hospital, some on ventilators, but glory be to God, they've come off through the power of God. And when they went into the hospital, they let us know and we prayed for them. So anybody who participates in our Bible study, if you're under quarantine or family member or or you're dealing with something in life, email us at City of Joy Global Ministries at gmail.com. We will agree with you and your family during this time. Secondly, as we're going through this study called discipleship, if you have any questions about discipleship as you're studying to show that self-approved, email us at the same email address. And next week in our call to discipleship part three, I'm going to spend some time answering some of your questions on next week. Is that all right? Go grab your Bibles, your pen, your pad, and your highlighter as we get ready to go into the Word. Can I give God a short prayer for His divine instructions? God, we love you. We thank you for this day. Thank you for all of your people, our online community. Bless us as we study about discipleship and strengthen us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Now, a couple of things that we need to go over. One, your MV, you know what MV is, your memory verse for this week is Romans 12 and 9. Write that on your sheet of paper, Romans 12, verse 9. And these words are powerful uh, out of Romans that you need to recite each day. And this is what it says. Love must be sincere. Hate what is evil. Cling to what is good. That's your memory verse over the next seven days. Our Bible study reading will uh, begin on tomorrow in Acts chapter 8, uh, and you'll be starting around verse 8 to verse 10, and we do read 10 verses for five days, 50 verses per week. Uh, we exclude Sunday, our day of worship, and Wednesday, our night of divine um, information through the Word of God. So you have your uh, memory verse, you have your reading, and we're including something else because we're in the call of discipleship. The new thing that's hot to trot is on the line right now. We're starting something called DC. That's right. Say DC. Now, DC, I'm not talking about the District of Columbia. In D.C., I'm not talking about my favorite football team, the Dallas Cowboys. That's right. That's my favorite team. But no, D.C., you know what that stands for now? Because you have graduated to this second section of the teaching discipleship. It stands for the Disciples Challenge. The Disciples Challenge. So now in our discipleship course, every week you're going to get a challenge to do over the next five to seven days before we come back. And so your discipleship challenge between now and next week is that you will encourage 10 people between now and next week. Uh, you'll give them a word of encouragement. You can text 10 people and give them a word of encouragement. Don't try the easy way, just your family, your mother, your sister, brother. Go outside of the box, you're a disciple. And somebody may say, well, Pastor, Pastor T, I'm not technologically savvy. Well, you can call somebody on the telephone in your call directory, and you have to give 10 people a word of encouragement for next week. That's your DC for this upcoming week. And I'm just happy to be Pastor T. I'm your discipleship coach. And so I need you to do it because next week we're going to take it to the next level. Let's start our lesson uh, on tonight 
In the late 1800s, scientists and doctors believed that diseases were created by spontaneous generations. The idea was that diseases were random acts that popped up spontaneously from the skin or from the dust, and it could kill hundreds or even thousands of people. Because these diseases were random, they couldn't be predicted or prevented. But a French scientist named Louise Pasteur, Louise Pasteur, boldly declared that the medical community had it all wrong. He claimed that there was an invisible world that couldn't be seen by the naked eye. This world was a world of microorganisms. These microorganisms floated through the air. They would attach themselves to food. They could be passed from person to person. Sounds like something similar, doesn't it? They could sit on contaminated objects and carry diseases. Immediately, those who believed the research started washing their hands. They started separating sick people from healthy people. They started to cover their mouths when they were coughing. But others scoffed at Pasteur's uh, idea because the thought that there was, listen to this, an unseen world that was causing problems of illness and death seemed strange. Now, today we know that Pasteur was right and his groundbreaking research in germ theory paved the way for vaccines to say, save millions of lives. And can I share with you disciples in our lesson on tonight in the call of discipleship, the Bible tells us that we have a unseen problem. You and I see the effects of this problem every day, crimes, abuse, disease, rage, violence, deceit. While these things are bad in and of themselves, they're only the symptoms of a deeper problem and the deeper problem that they point to is called soul sickness. Write that down on your sheet of paper, soul sickness. And so as a disciple, disciples are called to bring awareness to the prevalent soul sickness in our era. Whenever you see brokenness, it is a result of soul sickness. And there are relationships that has been broken not only on earth, but there's relationships that goes back to uh, the Garden of Eden that was broken between earth and heaven because of soul sickness. Now, now I'm going to tell you something this powerful. You need to get this in your spirit because you're in the call to discipleship. So I can go deeper with you now. Um, you can be a Christian and not be a disciple. And you need to write that down. You could be a Christian and not be a disciple. But if you are a disciple, you will be a Christian. So just because a person has been in church and they're officer in the church, it doesn't mean that they're a disciple. Just because you've been in church for 10, 15, 20, 25 years, it does not mean that you are a disciple. Okay. Disciples are learners, they're students, they're students of their teacher, not only the teachings, but the habits and the lifestyle. Let's go to Matthew chapter 28, um, verse 18, Matthew chapter 28. I want to start there. Uh, because when you learn to look at Jesus, you discover that he was the one who told us how important discipleship is. Uh, and we call this the Great Commission. But I want to look at verse 18 of Matthew chapter 28. It says, then Jesus came to them and said, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Now, why would he say that? Well, you got to understand Jesus has made it to Calvary. He made it down into the grave. He's gotten up from the dead with all power in his hands. But he says before he can go on to his next work, he needed to come to the disciples to tell them something specific. And look what he says. All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. 
and surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Notice this. Jesus comes to them after he has risen from the dead. He comes to them as a commander in chief to give his disciples orders. Now, if they're disciples, it, it would seem like that's enough. He said, no. The reason why he said he discipled them is so that now they're in a position to go and make disciples. So the message that he gives the disciples is what I've done for you, I need you to go and do that for others. And so the Great Commission, the commander in chief gives the word to his disciples after he has risen from the dead, I need you to go and make disciples. Can I tell you the work of the church has to be now more than ever in making disciples. Church membership is just the lower level. It's almost like the basic level of arithmetic. It's about the addition, the subtraction, but it's designed to get you higher so you can handle multiplication and division. So he says, now the reason why I poured into you is so that you can go and pour into others. Are you with me? Now let's go to John chapter number three, because I want to start looking at this deeper. Uh, because I was, I was blessed when, when, when God told me to start teaching this, and I have to teach this all year. I wish I had something better and, and, and more popular and more ear tingling for you, but he gave me assignment, and a part of a disciple, you got to be obedient to your master and obedient to your Lord. Uh, John chapter 3, and we're going to look at a man who was in Jesus' path, and Jesus made it his responsibility to minister and to disciple him. John chapter three. I'm going to read a number of verses. Let's start at verse one. Now there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus. Highlight Nicodemus. A member of the Jewish ruling council. So this man, Nicodemus, he was a religious man. He was a member of Israel's high ruling council. Verse two, he came to Jesus at night and said, Rabbi, we know, highlight Rabbi, you know what that means, we dealt with that last week in Bible study. We know you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one could perform the miraculous signs you were doing if God were not with him. In reply, Jesus declared, I tell you the truth, no one can see the kingdom of God unless he is born again. Highlight the word, uh, no one can see the kingdom of God. Now, this is important because we just talked about Pasteur. He was of the opinion that during his time, early 1800s, there were some unseen things going on making people sick. We see the same thing now that we call the invisible enemy. Our president calls the invisible enemy. Now, as a disciple, what you got to understand that Jesus says that if you have not been born again, there is a invisible world that you don't even know about because uh, a part of you being born again gives you the uh, visibility or the visual visualization to see stuff that you couldn't see when you was unsaved. Let me see if I can put it a different way. Uh, when a person gets saved, God gives them glasses. You see, if I take my glasses off, I can only see just a little bit. But when I put my glasses on, I can see with much more clarity. So when you have the spirit of God, he gives you the visibility to see things that you could not see before. Make sure you write that down. OK, and, and it's going to go a little bit deeper. Verse four. How can a man be born when he is old, Nicodemus? Because Nicodemus is trying to understand the unseen world through education. Surely he cannot enter the second time into his mother's womb to be born. Jesus answered, I tell you the truth. No one can enter into the kingdom of God unless he is born of water and of spirit. Verse six, flesh gives birth to flesh. Hallelujah. You need to highlight this verse six, because if you're a disciple, this is important. But the spirit gives birth to the spirit. Just like the flesh can give birth to flesh babies. The spirit can give birth to spiritual babies. The wind blows 
wherever it please. You hear its sound, but you cannot tell where it comes from or where it's going. So it is with everyone born of the spirit. Highlight that. So now Nicodemus is an educated man. He's a religious man. He has money. He has the apparent outward signs of success. But guess what? Something deeper in his life was missing. Something deeper. He was an education. He was a part uh, 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 of the religious uh, fraternity, if you allow me to say. But yet something in his life was, was missing. Nicodemus was a man, and disciples, you need to catch this, who needed to start over again. And this is extremely important because as disciples of Christ who ministers to people and in this culture and time in which we live, you have to understand that there are going to be many persons who look good on the outside, but they need to experience a change on the inside. There are going to be persons like Nicodemus who have the outward appearance of a big house, a big car, success, degrees, and the outward uh, 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 identifications or affirmations are all there. But guess what? They need something or a change on the inside. And so I think you need to write this down. Disciples are not concerned about the outward exterior. No, 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 no. Don't allow that because anybody who saw Nicodemus would have assumed he didn't need anything. He was well off. He was doing well. He lived in the gated community. His kids went to a, a, a high price, expensive uh, school or college. But what we see through this particular passage, Jesus is showing us disciples are not concerned about the outward exterior. We're concerned about the internal interior. And God is going to allow you to minister to people of affluence because they have all of the outward identifications. But the reality is they need an inward change. OK, and so Jesus shows us here by talking to Nicodemus, this educated man, he's actually taking him to school, but he's taking him to school about the unseen world. He says, unless you're born again, you can't even see the kingdom. I can explain it to you from now all the way to uh, 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 the next five years, but unless you have the spirit of God, it's going to go right over your head. Look at verse uh, 10. You are Israel's teacher, said Jesus. He's a teacher. And do you not understand these things? I tell you the truth. We speak of what we know and we testify to what we've seen, but still you people do not accept our testimony. I have spoken to you of earthly things and you do not believe. How then will you believe if I speak of heavenly things? He says, well, if you can't handle that, you can't handle this. Verse 13, no one has ever gone into heaven except the one who came from heaven, the son of man. We dealt with that last week. The son of man is actually Jesus. Even Daniel talked about the son of man. Just as Moses lifted up the snake in the desert, so the son of man must be what lifted up that everyone who believes in him may have eternal life. The problem with Nicodemus is that everything that Jesus is telling them about is a part of a invisible world. And so what disciples must do, disciples must have a commitment to ministering to people regardless of what their exterior says to the world. Go to Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2. Glory be to the name of God. And disciples, you need to learn this because God is going to open up doors for you to minister to people. But the only way he's going to open up doors, you can't get caught up in what a person looks like on the outside. Ephesians chapter 2, uh, verse 1. And, 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 and we're talking about this unseen level of operation with discipleship. Ephesians chapter two, verse one. You got it? If I'm going fast, make sure you can put it on pause. You can go back to it, but, but we're rolling now. We're in, we're in the second section, so I can take my feet off the brakes and push on the gas a little bit. Glory to God. Verse one of chapter two, as for you, you were dead in your trans transgressions and sins. You were dead in the transgressions and sins. Highlight that. Okay. All of us were in this place. 
So this verse tells us as disciples, we never look down on people because they are where we used to be. We all struggle. We just had different forms of struggle. We all have issues. We just had different levels of issues. We've all had challenges. We just had different areas where we were challenged in. So as disciples, this is important because when you talk to a person, don't talk to a person as though you never experienced it because all of us have had transgressions and we were dead in sin until Jesus Christ came into our lives and put our life on the right track. And so I'm disturbed by people who are disciples and they want God to have grace for them, but they don't have grace for other people. And so if God has done it for you, then you should be willing. That's a part of discipleship, sharing the love that God has extended toward us, towards somebody else. Are you with me? Let's go to Romans chapter 6. Romans uh, chapter 6. This is good. We're dealing with this unseen. Because a lot of times as disciples, you deal with a person. They, they, they can't tell that you've had struggles. They can't tell that you had issues. They didn't know you were bankrupt uh, 10 years ago. They didn't know you were just in your conversation that you were, had a divorce 20 years ago, uh, that you had a mental breakdown 17 years ago. That's unseen. It kind of looks like when you deal with somebody who's down that the main focus is them. But your approach to them is that, no. No, I, I'm a little further along in my uh, discipleship process with Jesus Christ. Uh, so I don't look down on you because if you saw me 20 years ago, <laughs> glory to God, 20 years ago, you ought to tell them I was you, Jesus. T 10 years ago, I was sitting in your place and thank be to God, somebody who knew God came to my life poured a word into me, spent some time on me, start praying for me, didn't give up on me, and thank be to God because of what they did for me and God did through them. Now I'm them and you're me. And the goal of discipleship, if you do it for that person, guess what? In the next year, two, three, or four, or five, they'll be you, and, they, and then who they used to be will be somebody else, and they can disciple the same way they were disciple, which was the same way you was disciple. Are you understand what I'm saying? Because all of us were dead at some point in the trespasses of sins. Okay? Romans 6.23. 6.23. I get excited when I read about this. Real disciples get excited. Listen to what verse 23 says. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God, how like gift of God, is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. So disciples are called, write this down, to share the gift of God with the world. The gift of God with the world. The gift of God. You're called. Uh, you, you, you're you're going to raise awareness to the gift of God. And how do I do that? I do that because um, I'm recognizing that these spiritual problems that exist, and this is real powerful, in a person's life, just like Nicodemus, that normally a person is not, uh, they're not aware of the real problem because they just think the problem is a existential reality. They just think it's something this. They just think it's because of that. And what they don't know is that, no, no, it's not just a problem in the relationship. It's not just a problem that they've experienced over the last five years in their personal life. It's not just a problem that they are struggling with commitment. They struggle with commitment for 10 years. But guess what? And this is a guarantee. The root of it is a spiritual problem. Nicodemus was not aware of the invisible world, but Jesus was. And so as Jesus was sharing with him about this invisible world, he started to deal with Jesus. And, and Jesus started to deal with him. And I like that because the Bible says in, in John chapter 3 with the same story, he came to Jesus at night. <laughs> His name is Nicodemus. So can I give him a nickname real quick? Let's call him Nick at Night. Nick at Night went to Jesus because he had some questions. Now, 
Now, what I like about it, I believe that as disciples, we have to be open when people that we're trying to minister to have questions so we can answer their questions. We can share with them. Jesus is talking to somebody who has some questions and he's dealing with them. Okay? And those of you, even right now, if you got questions, I shared at the beginning of this teaching, you can write me at cityofjoyglobalministries@gmail.com, and my, my team and I, we're going to help you. I'm, I'm, I'm a discipleship coach. And I would be honored to be your discipleship coach because in order for you to reach the people that God has called for you to do, it's going to require you stretching out of your box. It's going to require you coming out of your shell. It's going to require uh, you having a coach and a trainer to get you out of your comfort zone and start being pushed a little bit. Just like when you go to the gym, if you really want to get uh, a fit in a certain way, you sit down with a trainer. A coach has to work with your mindset. They have to work with your eating. They have to work with your exercise. It's not an instantaneous work. It is a work that affects your overall lifestyle, and you will see results upon results and upon results. And so as your discipleship coach, I would be honored to help you because there is an assignment. You have a ministry ground that you need to be busy in, even right now, while we are under certain quarantines and certain limitations. If you are a real disciple and a call to discipleship is on your life, you're going to be ministering right now in ways you can't even imagine. Because I I believe now that Christ sees really accelerates what's in you. I don't think it makes you. I don't think it makes you know. I believe that what's ever in you, that Christ sees calls, uh, calls it to accelerate. It brings it out. It pushes you in a way of innovation that you were not pushed before. And disciples, we have to be innovative. Uh, You can't go to people like you used to, but guess what? You have a phone. You can call. You can do ministry on your phone. You can do ministry on, on your computer. You can pour into people the words of Jesus Christ because what we just learned is that Uh, that's the gift of God. And when I share the gift of God, whether it's online, whether it's through the phone, that's the kingdom of God being advanced. Are you listening to me? Okay. Let's go to Romans chapter five. Romans chapter five. I love Romans. You've been studying Romans. Somebody wrote uh, wrote me and said they've been in Romans more than they've ever been in all their life. Glory be to the name of God. There's some powerful words in Romans. Matter of fact, one of my pastor's favorite scripture uh, is Romans 8 uh, and verse 1. We read it, I think, last week. um, And it's just so powerful, powerful. Bless you, Pastor. Love you, Pastor. Doing the work of God. Dr. Elijah Marshall been pastoring Greater Revelation for 50 plus, half a century. Amen. But I never forget uh, Romans chapter 8. Let's go to Romans chapter 5, verse 8. I want to read this verse. And we're coming. We're almost done. Stick with me now. Don't, don't, turn the, don't turn the TV off. Don't turn the cell phone off. Stick with me. We're in it. You're a disciple. You're called. Uh, verse 8. But God demonstrates his own love for us in that while we were still sinners. Highlight this. Christ died for us. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. We were a mess. He died for us. He gave up his life while we were yet sinners. We did not recognize who he was. We did not recognize his love. So what does that mean for us as disciples? You and I are called, write this down, to communicate to the lost while they're in trouble. We don't say we're waiting for them to come to church. We don't say we're waiting for them to come to a meeting. No, we're called. We're called to pour into them. We're called to cover them. We're called to lift them up. We're called to intercede. We're called when you leave that gas station, that same person you've been seeing on the corner who've been begging for five years, you ought to be like Paul. Ooh, good God, my father. You, you, you ought to be like Peter and John in Acts chapter 3. You can stop. Wind your window down if you don't want to get out. Brother, what's your name? I, I may not have money, but, but what's your name? Because when I call on the name of God, I'm going to pray for you. And I got a word for you that Jesus is a redeemer and he is a restorer. Are you with me here? Okay. So our rabbi, Jesus Christ, our rabbi died for us when we were not right. We were wrong, but he died. 
Now, the problem is, it doesn't seem like our troubles matched his actions. And that's what it is for a disciple. Sometimes the things that we do for a person will not match what they're doing. But just like he died for us, we have to give everything we got to proclaiming the gift of God because we're called to share the gift of God with men, women, boys, and girls. Are you with me? All right, let me give you this last verse. Last verse, and I'm done. I'm done. Your last verse. You like to hear the last verse. <laughs> yeah, let me give it to you. 2 Corinthians 5, 17. 2 Corinthians 5, 17. I'm not preaching, so I'm not going to close three, four, five times. I'm done. All right, 2 Corinthians 5, 17. It says, therefore, if anyone is in Christ Jesus, he is a what? New creation. I like the word new. So what does that mean, Pastor T? We're called to help people experience transformation. Not this outside stuff. Outside exterior stuff is not nothing to make us excited. We're called so that people can experience an internal interior change. Jesus does not change a person from the outside in. The devil does. But Jesus changes a person from the inside out. Bitterness, hatred, unforgiveness, uh, uh, resentment, envy, all of those things are not exterior issues. Those are internal issues. Jesus will come into the very core of who a person is. And I don't care how long they've been holding on to stuff. Once Jesus get in, he'll clean the house out. He'll get to the grass on the outside later, but he'll get on the inside and he'll start cleaning you up for the glory of God. And so today in this Bible study, we covered a number of things. One, there's a invisible world, just like what's going on in, the, in our world right now with the coronavirus. In the spiritual realm, it's invisible. You're called to minister to people who's unaware that the root of their problem is not physical, but it is spiritual in the precious name of the Lord. Disciples, I love you. I thank God for you. I pray that you receive your message from God on today. If, 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 you, if you need to stop, go back over it. If you joined us for the first time, go back to when we started the discipleship uh, course um, with week one, week two, week three. Come on up because we're building on a foundation. And God has told me that he's going to do great things through the whole world. We're going to reach, I expect, through the people that you want to encourage over the next seven days, I expect that we're going to reach through this discipleship. A thousand people will be encouraged between now and next week. I expect nothing less in the name of the Lord. Listen, I want to mention a couple of quick things. Remember, if you got questions, email us at City of Joy uh, Global Ministries at gmail.com on next. Uh, week's broadcast, I'm going to be answering a number of questions. If you have a person in your family who's been affected by coronavirus, please email us the name, uh, share with us so we can pray for them. We're a church that believes in prayer. Uh, and when God brings them home from the hospital or you come off quarantine, just, just, just type or write me, Pastor T, God has blessed me. That's a praise report. I just don't want to hear prayer requests. When I get a praise report, I throw my hands up and just say, thank you, Jesus, for being an awesome prayer answering God. And we consider you, yes, you, we consider you as family in Jesus' name. If you've been blessed by this ministry, I would encourage you to sow a seed into this ministry. There are at least three ways to pour into this ministry. P.O. Box 250, uh, City of Joy. Uh, information will come on your screen. Or you can send a cash app uh, seed. Or you can send a seed through Givelify. Amen. Until next week, listen, peace and blessings. C.A. Thompson, Pastor T., your host, Pastor And If anybody talks to you this week and asks you how you're doing, please tell them, Nehemiah tells me, the joy of the Lord, it is my strength. Be blessed in the spirit of the Lord.